Okay, so in example 14, we actually have two trinomials that they're asking us to multiply. Now there is no acronym, you can't use FOIL on this, so really all we're doing here is distributive property. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna distribute the x squared to each one of the terms in the second trinomial. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply x squared times x squared. Remember when you multiply, you add the exponents. Then x squared to the 2x gives me 2x to the third. And then finally, x squared times two is just 2x squared. Now, what I like to do, instead of when I go to distribute this next term, this negative 2x to the x squared, I'm not gonna write it over here and put negative 2x cubed. What I like to do is write it underneath the like term, so that way when I go at the end to combine my like terms, everything's all nice and lined up for me. But you could do a continuous all on one line. So I'm distributing negative 2x to x squared, and I get negative 2x to the third. Notice I didn't put it underneath the x to the fourth, I'm trying to line up my like terms to make it easier for me. Next, I'm gonna distribute the negative 2x to the positive 2x, and I get negative 4x squared. Distribute it to the positive two, and I get negative 4x. Next, I need to distribute the x squared now to the x squared, I'm sorry, the two to the x squared, and this gives me positive 2x squared, distribute the 2 to the 2x, 4x, and then the 2 to the 2, and I get 4. Now, when I go to add all these up, it's already lined up for me. So now I'm just going to add straight up and down. So I bring down, there's nothing to add to the x to the 4th. These two end up canceling out. I'm not going to put a 0 here, so I just get rid of it. Then here, when I add 2 minus 4 is negative 2 plus 2. This one's gone as well. And then here, same thing. So my final answer is just x to the 4th plus 4. Now, it doesn't always happen like this where everything cancels out, okay, except for two things. The next one you're going to see, everything's going to end up staying. We're going to have a representation of all of the exponents. So let's try the next one. Again, same thing. All we're doing is distributive property. So I'm going to distribute the 2x squared to the x squared, which gives me 2x to the fourth, 2x squared to the 3x, 6x to the third, 2x squared to the 2, 4x squared. Now I move to the next term. I'm going to distribute, and again, I take it as a negative 1x that I'm distributing. So negative 1x to x squared gives me negative x to the third. If you want to put it in as a negative one, so you'll remember to combine appropriately, you can. And then now I distribute the negative one x to the three x, negative three x squared. And then now the negative one x to the two, negative two x. So now I got to distribute my last term there. I'm gonna to try to distribute the four. I'll go back to white, it shows up better. Four to x squared gives me four x squared. Four distributed to the three x gives me 12 x. And then lastly, four to the two is eight. And now again, notice everything's all nice and lined up. Nothing to add to the two x to the fourth. Just write it down. I'm gonna combine my x cubes. So six x to the third minus one x to the third gives me positive five x to the third. Then I'm gonna add up my x squared terms. So I've got a four minus three is one plus four, five x squared. And then negative two x plus 12 x, 10 x, and then bring down the eight. And you're done. Notice this time, nothing ended up canceling out I didn't end up with any zeros, and everything was represented here. Okay, so these are some special products. Now, you can choose to memorize the patterns if you'd like. Um, the first one, or the first, yeah, the first one, 
notice this product that resulted by multiplying a binomial that has exactly the same um, terms in it. They both have an A, they both have a B, but they have opposite signs. One of the binomials is addition, one is subtraction, but this special product that results is called the difference of two squares. Remember the word difference means subtraction. So the result was a subtraction problem with two perfect squares. The next one, when you have a binomial and you square it, this is the pattern that it creates. Um, this pattern or this answer, this product is called a perfect square trinomial. Now, I am not going to test you on your vocabulary, but if you ever take a SAT or a PSAT and they're saying, given the following perfect square trinomial, you're gonna recognize what they're talking about. Once we start factoring these, a perfect square trinomial, when we factor it, its factors turn into a binomial that is squared. And it could be, this is also the same thing. Notice it's the binomial. The first one had a subtract, the addition sign. The second one had a subtraction sign. But both results are perfect square trinomials. The last two examples here, these are a binomial cubed. Now, you can either choose to memorize the pattern or what I always like to do instead is I just say, if I have a binomial that's raised to the third power, I'm just gonna write it down three times, take the first two, foil it, and then distribute it with the third. The problem I found when students try to memorize the patterns, sometimes they make careless mistakes. Now, some people are gonna be good, and you know, you're gonna recognize the patterns or memorize them, it's up to you. Um, same thing when you have your binomial squared. If I have a binomial and if I say A plus B squared, instead of memorizing the pattern, just write it down twice and then foil it. And you're gonna see what I'm talking about with um, some examples coming up. All right, so notice I've got two binomials here. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that I'm gonna foil it, or again, you can use distributive property if you don't wanna foil, but notice what's gonna result here is going to be the difference of two squares. If I do my acronym foil, my outer and inner are gonna cancel. So this would be first, or you're just distributing 2x to 2x, and you end up with 4x squared. Then I could distribute it to the outer term, and this gives me negative 6x. Then I'm gonna distribute it, or start here with the inner, three times 2x, positive 6x, and then finally last, positive three times negative three is negative nine. Notice my middle terms here are canceling out. Negative six plus six, and that's gone. So notice my result is the difference, subtraction sign, of two perfect squares. Four X squared is a perfect square, and so is nine. So whenever you see in your binomials, you actually have exactly the same numbers and letters, but one's a plus sign, one's a minus, recognize that the answer is gonna be a binomial, the difference of two squares. Let's try the next one. Same exact thing. I'm gonna do the whole foil or the whole distributive, but show you that the outer and the inner are gonna cancel again because they both have a 4a and they both have a 5b. Only difference is one has a addition sign and one has a subtraction. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply 4a times 4a, gives me 16a squared. Then I'm gonna multiply 4a to the negative 5b. This gives me 20ab. 
And then next, I'll distribute or multiply the 5B to the 4A. Now, what I like to do is I always like to write my variables alphabetically. Technically, you could put in here 20BA, but it makes it so much easier if I always put them when I'm multiplying two different letters or three. If I put them alphabetically, it helps me to identify my like terms a little easier. And then lastly, 5B to negative 5B, negative times positive is a negative 25B squared. I'm now going to combine my middle terms. Notice they cancel out. Negative 20AB plus 20AB is gone. So now I'm left with 16A squared minus 25B squared. Again, two perfect squares and they're joined by a subtraction sign. So the difference of two squares. The next one is a binomial squared. Now, pay close attention to this. Every year on the first test, when I give a question like number 18, the mistake that everybody makes is they think, oh, I'm gonna square the six, X, square the five, and then I'm done. But you miss out on the middle term. So my advice to you is either memorize the pattern or what's even easier, take that binomial, write it down two times, because that is what it means to raise something to the second power, and now FOIL or distribute. If you just try to square the 6x and the 5, you're going to miss out on one of the terms, and I'm going to mark the whole thing wrong. Okay, so make sure you do the whole FOIL process. So I'm going to do 6x times 6x gives me 36x squared. Then I'm going to do the two outer and get negative 30x. Then I'm going to do the inside and get negative 30x. And then I'll finally do last, which gives me positive 25. Notice the middle terms do not cancel out. I am left with a negative 60x and then plus the 25. So if you just tried to square this and square this, you would miss out on this 60 and you get it wrong. So write it twice in foil. Now there's some of you who aren't listening right now and you're gonna make that mistake on Thursday and you're gonna get it wrong. Write it twice and foil it or distribute it. Gonna write it twice. So I'm gonna write five minus eight X. I'm gonna write it again. So I get a trinomial here. Cause remember when it's a binomial squared, your answer is always a perfect square trinomial. It's always gonna have three terms. So let's multiply five times five, 25. Multiply five times negative eight, negative 40 X. Let's go to the inside, negative 40 X. And then finally last gives me positive 64 X squared. So now combine the middles. So I end up with 25 minus 80 X plus 64 X squared. Now, if the instructions do not say anything about standard form, that answer is perfectly acceptable. However, if it says, leave your answer in standard form, then I need to write the 64 X squared first, then the 80 X, and then the 25. So it needs to be like a countdown with the largest exponent all the way down to the constant. However, if it doesn't specify, either answer is acceptable. So we have 8x plus 3, and it's squared. Again, don't just try to square x, 8x and 3. We're going to write it twice, and we're going to distribute, or we're going to FOIL. So 8x plus 3, 8x plus 3. We're going to multiply first. 8x times 8x gives me 64x squared. And then I'll distribute the 8x to the 3 which gives me 24x. And then finally, let's do this one, the two inside ones, 24x. And then finally, last, 
3 times 3, and it's 9. Remember the middle terms, we're trying to get a trinomial. We can combine them, so this will give me 48x, and then I'll rewrite the 64x squared, and then the 9. And you're done. Now, we have a binomial that's cubed. We can either choose to memorize the pattern, which gets kind of messy, or let's just write down this binomial three times, and then we're just gonna multiply them. I'm gonna just take them two at a time, and then after I get that product, multiply it by the third binomial. So let's go ahead and we're gonna take these two first and we're gonna just deal with those first, either foil it or distribute it. And then after I get that answer, then I'm gonna multiply it one more time with that third binomial. So once I go ahead and distribute, I'm gonna multiply 3x times 3x, which gives me 9x squared. And then next what I'll do is distribute the three to the two, six X, then the inside, six X, and then finally last, plus four. So this is my first, and I'm gonna combine this. So now I have nine X squared, plus 12 X, plus four, and now I need to distribute it with the last binomial. So now I'll go ahead and, again, if you want to write what might be easier, let's put the green one in the front, and then we'll have less to distribute. It doesn't matter. You can leave it in the back. So now I'm going to distribute the 3x to the 9x squared, and I get 27x to the third. Then I'm going to distribute the 3x to the 12. 36x squared, then I'm gonna distribute the 3x to the four, 12x. Now, just like before, now when I distribute this two, I'm gonna write it underneath so my like terms are lined up. You can continually do it on the same line, but now I'm gonna multiply two times nine x, which gives me 18x squared. Notice I'm writing it right underneath my other x squared term and then two times 12x, 24x, and lastly, two times four. Now I can add it up, and my final answer here is 27x to the third plus 54x squared plus 36x plus eight. And that's your final answer. The other way is to go back through and memorize the pattern but again, the patterns get messy. So I would just write it three times and then multiply it. There is something called Pascal's triangle that you can use to get the coefficients for um, these binomials that are raised to a higher power. If it were raised to maybe the sixth power or the seventh power, then I would use the pattern or use, I would use uh, Pascal's triangle. Um, but again, we won't be doing huge uh, powers on our binomials. So for 22, x minus 2, x minus 2, x minus 2. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply, take them two at a time. So let me just go ahead and do this one, these two. So I'm going to FOIL. So x times x, x squared, x times negative 2, negative 2x. Two negative two times x, negative two x, and then finally last, negative two times negative two, positive four. I'm gonna go ahead and combine my middle terms here, and then the plus four. Now remember, we still need to multiply it by this one. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna bring it in the front, and now I'm gonna distribute. So x times x squared, x cubed. Then I'll distribute x to the 4x, negative 4x, negative 4x squared. Then I'll distribute it to the 4 
plus 4x. Now I have to start distributing the negative 2. So negative 2 to the x squared gives me negative 2x squared. Then I'm going to distribute it negative 2 to negative 4x is going to give me positive 8x. And then finally, the last one, I'm going to distribute the negative 2 to the positive 4, and I get negative 8. I'm going to add all this up. x to the third minus 6x squared plus 12x minus 8 is your final answer. All right, so for this one, two binomials. Now you might look at it and say, oh, they both have a 3a and a 4b, but notice the exponents on the a's are different. So I'm actually just gonna do distributive property here. I can't use any kind of tricks. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply the first term, which gives me a 9x, 9a to the fifth. Remember, you add those exponents when you multiply. Then next, I'm going to distribute the 3a squared to the 4b squared. And that's going to give me positive 12a squared b squared. Then now I'm going to distribute the negative 4b squared to the 3a to the third, which gives me negative 12a to the third b squared. Notice I'm putting it in alphabetically. And then lastly, I'll go ahead and distribute the negative 4b squared to the positive 4b squared, which gives me negative 16b to the fourth. Notice the middle ones this time are not like terms, so this is my final answer. Pretty good there. These do not cancel out, because this has an a squared, this is an a to the third. So, be very careful. Um, the biggest problem here in, in Algebra 2 is watching the little details. One little, you know, one little sign mistake or one little exponent mistake and your problem's wrong. So it, you need to be able to write neatly, read your own writing, and then, you know, show your work at all times. Okay, let's try the next one. We actually have three binomials. I'm going to just take them two at a time. So I'll go ahead and multiply these two first. Notice this time, this time my terms are the same, but one's a plus, one's a minus. So I'm going to FOIL x times x, x squared. And then now I'll go ahead and distribute the x to the negative y. I get negative xy. And then next I'm going to distribute the y to the x. And again, I write it alphabetically. See how much it easier it makes it when I go to combine like terms? I can already see the white and the green are going to cancel. And then finally, the last is going to be y times negative y, negative y squared. Now what I need to do is combine these two in the middle. They cancel. So now I'm left with y squared I'm sorry, x squared minus y squared. And I'm going to now multiply that with the x squared y squared. And again, I can still FOIL because they're both binomials. But again, distributed property is really the same as FOIL on when it's binomials. So multiply x squared times x squared gives me x to the fourth. x squared times y squared gives me positive x squared, y squared. Then the two inside, negative x squared, y squared. Again, I'm writing it alphabetically. And then finally, last, negative y squared times positive y squared is negative y to the fourth. Again, notice my middle terms here are gonna cancel out. So now my final answer is x to the fourth minus y to the fourth. Last one just says subtract 
the trinomial negative 7x to the 4th plus 5x squared minus 1 from 2x to the 4th minus 10x to the 3rd minus 4x. So we're taking this one and subtracting this one. So 2x to the 4th minus 10x to the 3rd minus 4x. Now, for my subtraction, I'm going to go ahead and write the binomial underneath it. So I have a negative 7x to the 4th. And then notice there's no x squared here. So I'm just going to put the 5x squared there and then the minus 1. So it's sort of like lined up a little bit for me. Now, I'm subtracting here. Remember my trick. I like to keep the white one, the first binomial or trinomial the same. Change this addition sign or change that to an addition. Change all the signs to opposites. Then I'll make that negative, that positive. Now I can combine. So 2x to the 4th plus 7x to the 4th gives me 9x to the 4th. Nothing to combine with the x cubed. My term here, nothing to combine from up above, but my sign is now appropriate. And then nothing to combine with the 4x, and then the 1, and you're done. If you don't do the keep, change, flip, the signs on these two terms are going to be wrong. So you need to do that and change them to opposite. So that is it for section three.